So today's talk is about coreference resolution in TensorFlow, which is a common natural language processing problem with applications in question answering, automatic summarization, machine translation, you name it. Uh, Jay has already introduced me, so I'm going to skip over my introduction. Uh, I work in machine learning. I've been working in it for around two years, and I recently graduated university, so I'm still new to uh, you know most of these things. Okay, so to start off, what is coreference resolution, and what does it have to do with conversations or chats? Uh, well, coreference resolution is the task which is commonly achieved through machine learning of finding all of the expressions in a text that refer to the same entity. So for example, in this chat, um, you can see that she in the third message is um, being referred to, to the user's sister that's mentioned in the first message. Um, similarly, you can see that the word my in my sister in the first message by the user is not a reference to the me in the second message by the bot because these are different speakers. But you'll see that John in the first message by the user, my friend John, is referenced by the bot um, as him in the second message. So these two examples show that not every pair of um, expressions is a core reference, even though they seem like they're using the same pronouns like me and my, but multiple users can um, you know, access or um, refer to the same e expressions or real world entities that were once defined in the conversation history by themselves or by someone else. So these expressions that refer to real world entities um, in this domain are known as mentions. And the task of finding them is the first one in Go reference resolution. So in this example, you can see that there are four real world entities, the user, the bot, um, the user's sister, and the user's sister's friend, John. <laughs> so in total, there are six mentions of these entities that are all highlighted. So. Let's now look into how do we successfully execute the task of mention detection and what features do we need for it? Well, the first set of features that are rather obvious are named entities. Um, named entities are predefined categories such as you know, names of people or organizations, companies, um, geographical locations, um, dates or times, quantities, money, etc. So everything that you can extract using rules or heuristics like regular expressions or you know, with a pick list, like a list of all of the countries in the world, or even with machine learning models that are specifically written for named entity recognition. Um, yeah, these features would be really useful for um, finding mentions. The second set of features at the word level that help define the parts of speech associated with words in a sentence are based on grammar rules, which are called um, parts of speech tags or POS tags. So for example, here you can see that Alex Smith and Acme Corp Incorporated, they're both um, you know, proper nouns. So that means that these are probably entity mentions. And the same would apply for you know, other nouns and pronouns. So this makes a good feature for mention detection. Um, a third set of features that is really helpful is called dependency tags. So if we break down a sentence by grammar rules into several small components, that are either words or you know, couples of words like phrases, then assigning roles to these components um, really helps parse a sentence into meaningful portions. So in this example, you can see that the subjects and objects um, are very likely to be entity mentions that are even correlated or co-referenced with each other. So extracting these three features via rule-based NLP or pre-trained models, here's a simple architecture that implements a model for mention detection. So here per word, we're using features like the clean token, the POS and NER tag, um, the word casing and the head dependency and passing these features through a recurrent neural network that's kind of custom designed as mentioned in the paper. Um, after that, we generate a hidden representation of each of the words internally, and then finally apply a binary softmax decision on whether or not the word is a mention. Now, we could manually test out various different you know, word level feature combinations for building the perfect model, or we can simply use word vectors that learn the same features inside a model's embedding matrix via backpropagation. 
So here we have results of male versus female mentions of entities for a pre-trained model on the left, where you'll see that they all kind of overlap with each other. Whereas on the right, trained embeddings on a mention detection task clearly separate the two. So this image is from Neural Coref, which is an implementation by Hugging Face, which proves a point that the model was able to learn distinction between different kinds of mentions, male and female, by training on the task of mention detection. So automatically, instead of feeding these features you know, to the model manually, the model was able to learn this. Um, so that means that you know, choosing embeddings or word vectors for this kind of task is um, definitely the superior choice to make. Yeah, so right, to write out the recurrent neural network architecture for the model that I just showed, um, using embeddings instead of you know, handmade features, um, the simplest architecture in TensorFlow would only take four lines of code. We start with a sequential model that takes as input token IDs for each word in a sentence. This is connected to an embedding layer that indexes word vectors, each of length 64, for every token ID in that sentence. Then these vectors go through a recurrent layer of dimension 128. And you can add more recurrent layers here or even change you know, the number of hidden units inside them based on your chatbot's um, data or your model's validation performance. Finally, a softmax activation per word gives you the output of entity mentions in your sentence. Now, this architecture is rather simplistic with binary classifications. So you can also train a model which predicts mention types or categories, such as person, location, et cetera, and perhaps also predict the span of each mention, as in which word starts the entity, which word lies inside it, and you know which word ends the entity, et cetera. Either way, um, you would only be changing the final output layer of your model, and the rest of the architecture will more or less stay the same. All right, so now that we have um, detected mentions, how do we use them to resolve co-references? That's step two. So um, in the previous um, example of mention detection, you can probably tell that just using classification outputs would lose information, right? So we will end up with probably more false positives than we'd prefer. For example, her is a feminine pronoun, which is more likely correlated to my sister than my friend John. So if I just use outputs of every mention, um, just the classification outputs, it wouldn't make sense to compare every classification output with every other one and then um, you know, find out some, use some way of like, um, you know, changing uh, the, the, the results between them. So instead of using classification outputs, we want to use the vector representations that are learned by the mention detection model to in that, you know, that encapsulates that information. So um, the classification outputs would just be used for filtering out the entities or the mentions that we want to compare. But then for you know, linking multiple entities together, we, we would be using their hidden representations or their word vectors. So here's an example architecture that was referenced by Neural Coref. So here you see that single mentions are used to find which entities are likely to be mentions. And then we can compare each pair of mentions for possible correlation um, if we are sure of you know, single mention detection. Um, and you can use um, different sorts of uh, features, not just the word vectors. Um, so in this task, you see that uh, they've used word vectors as well as additional features like the distance between two mentions and um, whether two mentions are exact word matches, et cetera. And they also have um, you know, additional features of per word, like um, NER, parts of speech, et cetera. So um, these features would be called the mention representation um, for, for every mention that you have. So great. Now that we have the third step, um, you know, the second step done, the third step would finally be to define the model for entity linking. So note here that the data you'll be using to train all of this would be your own, or at least an open source data, um, and you would require it for training each of your models. So as shown before, our training data would be pairs of entity mentions, and for each pair, we would optimize binary cross entropy loss of whether or not it's a pair of coreference. So a simple architecture for that is shown here. 
Um, this is a reference from another paper. Uh, we start by concatenating the vectors of every mention and candidate, as well as additional features that might go along with it. Um, we pass it through a deep neural network and end it in a sigmoid classification of whether or not it's, um, it's a co-reference pair. So continuing code for this in TensorFlow, you will concatenate um, the vectors for your mention and candidate, and then pass it through three dense layers of dimensions 256, 128, and 64. Again, you can play around with this, use different layers or use different dimensions. This is your choice or based on your model's performance. Finally, you have a sigmoid classification layer that gives us a confidence score of how likely this mentioned candidate pair is a co-reference. So another way to do this could also be to softmax all over your candidates for the same mention via a method called pairwise ranking where each pair gets a score from the model, and that pair that receives the best score is connected as a co-reference. So this can also be implemented if you were trying to pass all of your mentions and candidates through the same network um, at once. Um, another method of um, implementing co-reference resolution could be using state-of-the-art NLP, where you create an end-to-end -end model for this task. Um, so this is an architecture diagram from Spanbert for this task. Um, they take every word and pairs of words to create spans out of them, and then they generate span representations or mention representations by performing summation over each of the hidden representations of the words. And then finally, the model goes through pairwise ranking to find the best mention and candidate pairs. So um, yeah, the network in between um, pairwise ranking and span representations um, in this paper was a transformer architecture, but you can also use an attention network or even a deep neural network um, if you're testing things out on your own. Well, <laughs> given all of the tips that I've given today, I hope you'll be able to build um, a core reference resolution model and start using it in your chatbots. Um, to use it in your chatbots for every past message, you'd want to keep a list of all of the mentions that have been, uh, you know, that have been mentioned by both your user and your bot. And then for every new message, you would want to compare the mentions in this new message with all of the mentions that have previously gone before. Um, and that way you'll be able to find co-references, you know, across different messages. Um, that's it. I hope today's session was helpful for you. Feel free to leave comments on the video, or if you have specific questions, you can also email me on this email uh, or reach out to me on LinkedIn.